Hey everyone, welcome to Planes Overhead. Uh, we are continuing with the data navigation series and uh, today we are talking about GNSS. So standard disclaimer that I have been using all this uh, while. So GNSS of course stands for Global Navigation Satellite System and uh, it is uh, the idea is to replace all the terrestrial radio navigation facilities such as the VOR, DME. Okay. So there are many GNSS systems that are available nowadays. You have the GPS of the USA, uh, GLONASS of the Russia, Bidou, China, Galileo, European Union. There are certain uh, other countries which are developing their own navigation satellite systems, but uh, most of them are regional, like for example, India has Gagan. Okay, so global navigation satellite systems are pretty much uh, these four. So before we get into discussion, I would like to just, uh, you know, discuss Kepler's law. So the first law sta states that a satellite's orbit describes an ellipse with the Earth at one of the foci. Okay, so the orbit of the satellite is like a ellipse. That was that's what the first law states. Second law states, a satellite sweeps out equal areas in equal time. Okay, so the areas in the yellow color that you can see, the areas will be equal, meaning the time taken for the satellite to travel and from the foci which is the earth one of the foci of the ellipse the areas will be equal the yellow areas are equal third law the square of the satellite's orbital period okay is proportional to the cube of its semi major axis so that is t square is proportional to r cube okay so that's the third law so let's talk about position reference system. So GNSS uses a three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system with its origin at the center of the Earth, as you can see in the diagram. Okay, we are assuming that the Earth is a sphere. Of course, the Earth is not a complete sphere, it's a spheroid, but that's okay. For reference, that is pretty good enough for a calculation point of view. So GPS uses WGS84, which is the World Geodetic Survey of 1984 model for its terrestrial position okay so in this video we shall be majorly discussing the gps and this is an important point wgs84 so let's talk about the gps segments there are three segments the space segment control segment and the user segment we shall discuss one by one each one of them so what does the space segment consist of it comprises a constellation of 24 satellite vehicles in six orbital planes 21 are operational and 3 are in space pairs. Okay, this is however theoretical, but nowadays, of course, the, the satellite numbers is increased a lot up to, I think, around about 70. So, but still, as per theoretical uh, purpose for the exam point of view or anything of like that, 24 satellite vehicles in 6 orbital planes is fine. The height is at 10,898 nautical miles, which is approximately 20,000 kilometers, with an orbital period of 12 hours. The orbital planes have an inclination of 55 degrees. Satellite vehicles have 3 to 4 atomic clocks with an accuracy of 1 nanosecond. Okay, so they are working on atomic clocks. So each satellite vehicle broadcasts a unique pseudo random noise PRN codes on two frequencies in the UHF band. These are the frequencies L1 and L2 with those 157.42 MHz and 1227.6 MHz. Okay, now only the CA, that is the course acquisition code, is available to civilian users, meaning L1 frequency is only available. And the P code is available for US military and approved civilian users. Okay, so at a point, the device that you're using will probably receive only L1 frequency. So the control segment consists of the master control station, which is at Colorado, and uh, backup control station is in Onizuka and five monitoring stations across the world. So these stations check the satellite vehicle's internal computed position and clock time every 12 hours. Okay, so they keep conversing with the satellite and check their uh, position. When a positional error is detected by these stations, it is shared with the satellite vehicles and it is incorporated into calculations. Okay, so the error is added into that calculation. User segment. So the user segment is all the GPS receivers which use the space segment to determine the position. So your mobile phones, your iPads, your laptops, anything that has a GPS receiver basically. Uh, even your navigation systems, the aircraft of course. So these receivers may be standalone 
or be part of integrated systems like mobile phones etc so how does the principle of operation how is the gps really working so generally the receivers receive l1 frequency from various satellite vehicles as i was telling you the receiver measures the distance from using the travel time of a radio signal okay it measures the distance the distance derived from this method of computing distance is called pseudo range because it is not a direct measurement of distance but a measurement based on time okay so we are dividing it by 2 because the signal traveling we are dividing it okay in addition to knowing the distance to a satellite a receiver needs to know the satellite's exact position in space this is known as its ephemer ephemeris four satellites are required to create a 3d fix meaning 3d fix in the space will be requiring at least four satellite so that as you can see there are four satellites to give a 3d fix so then there are certain errors that are there in gps minor disturbances in satellite orbits from gravitational variations from the sun and the moon or solar wind these errors are called as ephemeris errors around about 2.5 meters then ionospheric signal delays are there which are caused by water vapor in the atmosphere this is the biggest source of signal error around about 5 meters slight fluctuations in the satellite atomic clocks 1.5 meters receiver quality like faulty clocks or internal noise 0.3 meters this is the manufacturing defect multi path signal reflections of structures 0.6 meters however even if you see these are very very uh, minute errors compared to the size of the earth okay so gps is highly highly accurate so accuracy then uh, when you do the calculations the icao specification requires an accuracy to be vertical of plus minus 13 meters horizontal plus or minus 22 meters and time accuracy is required up to 40 nanoseconds okay so that's it on this video guys uh, you can check out the quiz link in the description thank you for watching subscribe to the youtube channel and like the facebook page for regular updates Give this video a thumbs up if you like the video share it with your friends comment below if you have any doubts and quiz link is in the description you can hit me on these uh, links on your screen cheers happen happy landings guys take care bye bye